Dialysis machines are mainly used to treat the patients who are suffering from chronic renal or chronic kidney failure. So he, in this picture, you can see a chronic kidney failure patient is undergoing a hemodialysis treatment with the help of a hemodialysis machine. Usually hemodialysis machines are installed in hemodialysis units of a hospital as well as hemodialysis centers. As you can see, the leading manufacturers of hemodialysis machine, that is Bibron, Fresenius, Baxter, Nikiso, and Nipro. So you can see here the candidates who are seeking a job career in a dialysis domain. They can offer a job role of sales engineer, service engineer, as well as clinical application specialists in these manufacturing companies. The patient who need to do hemodials should go for four hours of therapy as well as they or he or she should go for three to four days of hemodialysis treatment per week. As you can see, the dialysis technician or dialysis nurse is responsible for drawing blood from the patient with the help of syringes and needles, as well as they'll be using blood tubes. So you can see there is a peristaltic pump situated here, which is known as a blood pump. So the blood pump helps in drawing the blood from the patient and it pumps the blood to the dialyzer or artificial kidney for filtration of the blood. So this peristaltic pump or the blood pump will be integrated with a syringe pump, which is known as a heparin pump. So heparin pump is responsible for inducing a heparin bolus to the patient bloodstream in order to avoid blood clotting or coagulation. Right now, our patient is undergoing a heparin-free dialysis. In this picture, you can see the circuit is not connected to a heparin pump. So the patient is undergoing a heparin-free dialysis. So heparin-free dialysis is mainly done for the patients who underwent recent surgeries or the patients who is having low platelet count in their blood, as well as those who are having active bleeding. So after blood pump, the blood moves to a dialyzer. So a dialyzer is also known as an artificial kidney. Usually a dialyzer consists of two compartments, inner and outer compartments. So this inner and outer compartments of a dialyzer is separated by a hollow fiber. So this hollow fiber is nothing but a semi-permeable membrane, which is permeable to the substances, which is having low molecular weight. So here you can see the movement or the flow of the blood to the inner compartment of the dialyzer from the patient. And after filtration, the blood comes out from the inner compartment. At the same time, our dialysis machine produces a fluid, which is known as dialysate. So dialysate is a fluid which is produced by dialysis machine. And it, it is the composition of acid, bicarb, and RO water. So it is mixed in ideal proportions, having ideal temperature and conductivity with the, with the help of hydraulic components inside the machine. As you can see, the dialysis technician or a dialysis nurse can set all the parameters or they can adjust the parameters such as temperature and conductivity of a dialysis as well as they can set the dialysis time as well as fluid removal volume in the dialysis machine screen under the guidance of a nephrologist or a doctor. So you can see the movement of the dialysis after filtration, it will be drained out from the dialyzer. So you can see the flow of the blood as well as you can see the flow of the dialysis. So both are flowing in the dialyzer in opposite direction, which results in a counter flow. So this counter flow causes a process which is known as diffusion. So diffusion is nothing but the toxic substances such as urea, creatinine and ions, et cetera, from the blood will be diffused to the dialysis with the help of a semi-permeable membrane. So the fresh dialysis becomes a used dialysis and after filtration, this dialysis will be drained out from the dialyzer. So coming to, let me explain once more, 
that is what's the difference between a dialyzer and dialysate so dialyzer is nothing but it's an artificial kidney which consists of hollow fibers which is mainly used to purify the blood and dialysate it is nothing but it is the fluid which is produced by the machine with the help of acid bicarb and ro water which helps in the process of clearance of the toxic substances from the patient blood to the dialysate so that's the difference between dialysate and dialyzer so now you can see the pathway of the blood after filtration so the blood will be returned to the patient after filtration and you can see the pathway of the fresh dialysate to the dialyzer and it undergoes diffusion after diffusion it becomes a used dialysate or waste dialysate and this waste dialysate will be drained out from the dialyzer to the drain pipeline or waste pipeline of a hospital now you can see the blood which is returning to the patient will be connected to a detector which is known as an air detector which is responsible for responsible for detecting the air bubbles in the blood as well as you can see two pressure sensors situated here which is responsible for analyzing or monitoring the patient arterial and venous pressure throughout the therapy now you can see in the picture it is nothing but it's an updated or advanced version of a hemodialysis machine which is known as hemodia filtration machine usually a hemodia filtration machine consists of two peristaltic pumps so as you can see the picture it is having two peristaltic pumps suppose you are visiting a dialysis unit and you are seeing a dialysis machine with having two blood pumps or two peristaltic pumps then you can suspect or you can confirm that it may be a hemodia filtration machine now you can see here so the first one is nothing but a blood pump and second one it is nothing but a substitution pump so the advantage of a hemodia filtration machine is that it clears the clearance efficiency will be high comparing to a typical or a normal hemodialysis machine and it improves the lifestyle of the patient or life quality of the patient so the hemodia filtration machine do 80 to 85 percentage workload of a kidney as well as it reduces the frequency of dialysis thanks to our newly developed high flux dialyzer which helps in clearance of high molecular weight substances from the blood or which clears the high toxic materials which is having high molecular weight from the blood as you can see this is our high flux dialyzer here and right now actually the main demerit of the machine or the main factor that is pulling back the popularity of this machine or this treatment is that the high cost of consumables and therapy it is not economically feasible for all types of patient to afford the cost of the consumables and therapy so it can it can be this therapy can be used for all types of chronic renal failure patients now in this picture you can see there is a machine it's a very advanced or very special machine which is known as crrt machine or continuous renal replacement therapy machine so this machine is mainly used in hemodialysis units icus emergency department as well as the main specialty is it can be also used in organ transplant procedures so usually a a patient who comes with acute kidney failure should undergo 24 hours of or more than 24 hours of non stop dialysis therapy or renal replacement therapy so this non stop dialysis or renal replacement therapy is known as crrt or continuous renal replacement therapy so this machine consists of five peristaltic pumps you can see in the picture it is having five peristaltic pump that is it consists of blood pump replacement or dialysis pump replacement or dialysis tube pump 
free blood pump as well as a effluent pump. So you can see here it comes of five pumps. Usually all CRRT machine comes with three to five peristaltic pumps. And you can see here, we'll be using a dilacer or a filter according to the criticality or the severity of the patient condition. So the dilacer or the filter will be selected by the nephrologist according to the condition of the patient. So for more, in, so if you are interested in studying more about a dialysis machine, kindly join our online training. So it's a, it will be a six hour session and it covers more of, more over of clinical hardware as well service aspects of the machine. So it will be a great visual experience as well as it will be a great learning asset for a biomedical engineer. Thank you.